Hey guys, John Rettinger here. I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the software on the Amazon Kindle 2. Hope you enjoy. Alright guys, so here is the Kindle powered off. I'll go ahead and turn it on. Slide the switch on top. Takes a second. And it blinks a few times and lights up. So what you're greeted with when you turn the Kindle on is what's called the Kindle home screen. And this lists all of your content that you have here and you can navigate by that little black bar that follows it. You can see right there I'm reading Too Fat to Fish, Kindle 2 User's Guide comes standard on it, the Oxford Dictionary, and the archived items. And something that you want to read, and say I want to read the Kindle 2 User's Guide, I just use this little joystick down here, push it in, glows, and opens right up. And it'll open right up to where you last were, which is actually a very cool thing. So you can be reading a book, close it, go and open a magazine, come back to your book, and be right on the same page you were in addition to right where you were on your magazine. It actually remembers right where you're at, which is a very nice feature. So let's go back to the home screen. Let me show you what your options are here on the home screen. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with the Kindle. And for those of you that are watching this for the first time and don't know what the Kindle is, let me preface this software tour by saying it's an ebook reader. It's another way to read books, magazines, blogs, and such on another device. So let me go ahead and show you this. So we'll go ahead and hit the menu button. And this gives you a full list of menus. Right here is where you turn your wireless off. On Kindle 1, there was a switch for that, but now it's right here. You've got Shop and Kindle Store that I'll show you in a moment. Search, you can actually search for any content that you have on your Kindle, uh, words or topics. Settings, not much in the way of settings, really just change your email address, registration of the Kindle, and that's about it. Experimental, experimental is actually where some of the cool stuff is, so let me show you that. First, you've got a basic web browser, play MP3s, and text-to-speech. So this does have Sprint's EVDO 3G connectivity here. It's how it downloads books, again, which I'll show you in a moment. So this takes advantage of that by using the web. So you can view the web here. Go ahead and open it up. and opens up a pretty basic browser. Here's some sites that are already formatted for Kindle. We'll open Wikipedia. Let's show you guys what that looks like real quickly. So it's actually a very quick load. and It's a very usable browser if you're in a pinch. And you've got your URL bar right up there. And you can type in whatever you'd like using the on-screen keyboard on the Kindle. And there you go, you've got Wikipedia right at your fingertips. So that's the browser. And it does have a very rudimentary MP3 player on here. I don't have any MP3s, but if I did, it would play. So you can enter URL, go to top, you can set bookmarks, and there are some general settings here for the browser. But I'm going to go ahead and gloss over this so I can get to the other good stuff without making this a 30 minute long video. So we'll go ahead and back to home screen. So one of the big things that the Kindle has is the ability to wirelessly download all of your content. So you never actually ever have to connect this to a computer. You're not tethered to a computer to get your content. You download everything right here on the Kindle. So let me show you what that looks like. We'll go ahead and hit menu. We'll go shop in Kindle store. Connects to the network. And it pulls up a full list of Kindle options. This is kind of the store home screen here. It recommends some books for you based on some other stuff you've purchased. You can navigate by books, newspapers, magazines, blogs, national bestsellers, Kindle top sellers, news and noteworthy books. Let's go to Kindle top sellers here. And all the books I've searched for, I haven't found one book that's not in Kindle format. So something to keep in mind that really everything you want will be here. So the first book that's in Kindle top sellers is a book called Assassin's Apprentice. Let's say I want to download Assassin's Apprentice. So I'll go ahead and hit the middle button of the five-way joystick right there. It loads up. And here you're greeted with a description of the book, the option to buy it, custom reviews. You can kind of scroll down and keep reading all the different custom reviews, which is actually very handy. You can see more. And it'll load up more reviews. And you can really get a sense of what people thought of the book. So let's go back to Royal Assassins. One other really nice thing that the Kindle has is the ability to try a sample. Think of it like iTunes. When you go to the iTunes store, you can play 30 seconds of a movie. This will give you the first chapter of a book, so you can really get a chance of whether you like it or not. So let me go ahead and download a sample, and you can see how quickly at least one chapter downloads and compare that to a full book. Try a sample. 
And you buy everything here using Amazon one click. You set that up online and you are good. So right now it's we're sending you a free sample automatically appear in your home screen. So I'll go to home and we'll see how long it takes for it to show up. It actually is very quick. I downloaded a full book in just under 60 seconds. So definitely keep that in mind. You're probably looking at anywhere from a minute to a minute and a half for a full book, depending on your network connection. And there it is, Royal Assassins. It says sample right next to it, so I'll open that up. And there's the book. So as long as we're in here on text, let me go ahead and give you guys a software overview of what your options are when you're reading a book. So this is a gray scale screen. It's actually, uh, I believe, 16 shades of gray. And the reason it's gray and not backlit is to make it easier on the eyes, just like reading a regular book. So here I've got an example. Here's A Brief History of Time by uh, Stephen Hawking. So if you look at this here, it's just standard text, black and white, and is very similar to the way things look on the Kindle. So that, that's at least the rationale behind that. So when you're here, depending on your age or your eyesight, you can have the option to set the font wherever you choose. So right down at the bottom, there is a font button. You go ahead and click that. Move this back up. And you're going to a whole bunch of different font sizes here. You can kind of pick what you like the best. You go all the way up to the biggest. You can see how big that gets. And different sizes in between. I found the middle font to be quite good for me. Now you also notice right below there it says text to speech. Kindle also has a built in text to speech, meaning it'll read the book to you. Don't expect any sort of audiobook functionality. It's not going to sound like an author's eloquent voice. As you'll hear in a minute, it's very robotic. And you can choose the speech rate, whether it's slower, the default, or faster. And you can choose whether it's a male or female. So let me show you guys what this sounds like. Should I turn that on? The menu. And I will start text to speech. A second to kick in. Prologue dreams and awakenings. Why is IT forbidden to write down specific knowledge of the magics? Perhaps because we all fear that such knowledge would fall into the hands of one not worthy to use it. Certainly, there has always been a system of apprenticeship to ensure that specific knowledge of magic is passed right, down. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Judged worthy of such knowledge. While this seems a laudable attempt to protect. So you get a sense of what the text-to-speech sounds like. It sounds really robotic and definitely qualifies as an experimental feature. I don't think I would ever use it even if I was in a car, but if that it does seem usable to you, you can use the external speakers on the back of the device, or you can plug in a headphone using the 3.5 millimeter headset jack. So when you want to turn a page, you've got two options. You can either hit the next button on the left or next button on the right, and when you hit that, you'll see a flash, and the page appears. Now one of the cool things about the Kindle is the battery is only being used when it's changing what's on the screen. So right now it is not using a single cent of battery to display the content. Obviously it's using some to connect to the 3G radio, but if you turn the radio off and you're just reading a page, you're not using any battery life. Meaning battery life on this device is fantastic. I've been reading pretty much straight since I got it on Monday. As you guys can see, I still almost have full battery life, which is really impressive and that's even keeping the 3G radio on. It's definitely something to keep in mind as you guys start to use the device. So I'll go ahead and go back to the home screen. And that's about it guys, just a real quick software overview of the Kindle and how it works. I've really enjoyed using it. It's been very easy on the eye so far and I'm gonna save the rest of those comments for a full review coming up. And stay tuned for a few videos on Kindle tips and tricks and the final review video. Now one thing I did want to bring up is that there is Kindle software for the iPhone and the iPod Touch. And people have been asking me, I'm getting a lot of questions, why did I get a Kindle when I can just read a book on the iPhone? So let me show you guys something interesting here. I cannot read that much on the iPhone. It uh, hurts my eyes after a while. It's great for reading an email or reading a blog, but it comes time to reading a full book. It really is a strain on the eyes. So. It's a nice complement to the Kindle, certainly not a replacement for it, in my mind. And even screen size alone is quite different. You know, the screen size cuts off right there, and there's a lot more room. And this really looks like a native page. This has some glare and reflectiveness that does, you know, hurt my eyes at least. 
Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this software overview of the Kindle 2. For exclusive content, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.